Good afternoon, everyone. I, Tina Gurnani, welcome you all to ET Telecom's webinar. To present this webinar, I welcome Mr. Ali Hosseini, the founder and CEO of Sendra and co-chair of Laura Alliance Marketing Committee. Our esteemed speaker will share valuable insights on the topic, how LoRaWAN could drive India's IoT ecosystem. There will be a presentation on the topic followed by a question and answer session, wherein you may submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Now I request Mr. Ali Hosseini to start the presentation. Over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join this uh, webinar and thank you, uh, Economic Times, for hosting. Um, as uh, discussed, uh, we will spend the next hour or so uh, really discussing a little bit more in detail on LoRaWAN and the benefits uh, that will initially um, penetrate the India IoT market uh, and then I'll walk you through how it's really starting to actually drive the ecosystem. Um, so to get started, uh, let me just make sure the presentation is going. Yep. So as everyone already knows, NASCOM came out with a report um, several years ago that the overall India IoT market uh, is expected to touch about 15 billion US dollars by 2020. Uh, what we're gonna try to do today is actually narrow down into that overall market space and how LoRaWAN and LPWAN uh, plays a big role into that. Uh, within um, India, by 2022, the DOT uh, had made a, a report stating that 5 billion devices are expected to be connected uh, by 2022. Uh, what I'm seeing and, and what, what we're seeing here uh, is that the majority of these devices will actually be driven by the smart cities effort, which is an ideal situation um, for the LPWAN space, uh, specifically LoRaWAN. Uh, to let you know uh, where we have gone uh, since we've started this uh, journey, um, LoRaWAN actually in India initially came around 2015. Um, Tata Communications made a big announcement that they were deploying a uh, public uh, network uh, throughout India. Uh, and from that point, uh, several companies uh, started to join the Lora Alliance um, to really help push this ecosystem. Um, uh, Sinra, uh, the company which I own, uh, we joined uh, in May 2017 uh, and also started to deploy LoRaWAN networks uh, to support this aggressive uh, device connectivity projections by the DOT. This slide here really demonstrates uh, announcements, uh, PR news that has actually came out since this journey has begun, and it really shows how powerful the technology uh, is uh, and how quickly it's being adopted. Um, just a few highlights, um, ET Telecom came out with a report, Danish Khan picked it up, um, that LoRaWAN uh, and NBIoT, and where does that stand? Um, and it's a really good article uh, explaining the two technologies uh, and that LoRaWAN actually has um, uh, an edge currently in the market space. Uh, the fact that we are here now uh, deploying networks, uh, actual projects commercially are being deployed, while NB-IoT is still in its trial phases. Um, so I wanted to show this that uh, we are relevant, we are here today, and there are actual commercial projects taking place as we speak. Um, from a Laura Alliance perspective, being the co-chair of the marketing committee, uh, I want to just kind of uh, put that hat on uh, and really show you the growth of the memberships within India itself, um, starting in 2016 all the way to current today, which our latest member was IIT Bombay. Um, you'll see that it's exponentially growing. Uh, within the APAC region itself, it's over 137 members. Uh, and so if any of you all are interested in joining this uh, ecosystem, uh, you can always email me and there'll be a, a slide at the end for um, the Lower Alliance Marketing Committee that you can email uh, to get more information on the membership growth. But why do you see this growth intake happen? And it, it's because of the technology. The technology is actually making a difference. Um, and within these last few years, you're actually starting to see the ecosystem grow. Uh, when we started the, the Sinra journey, 
Um, there wasn't that many device makers in India. There wasn't that many solution providers in India. There was a lot of educating taking place, talking to government officials, um, CEOs of smart cities, talking to the big industry players, to explaining them how powerful the technology is. Uh, LoRaWAN, if, if you're not familiar with it, it's a long range communication uh, solution that is excellent when it comes to cost and long lasting battery life. And roughly about 70% of smart cities in India benefit and need that kind of technology um, to really implement uh, successful smart city projects. As you see here on this screen, uh, from lighting to the utility space to industrial IoT, companies, big and small, are now starting to jump on this bandwagon uh, wagon of the, the LoRaWAN ecosystem and solutions are being made devices are there, a readiness of chips and modules are already there, and you can easily uh, contact companies uh, to get started with your development. Uh, obviously, Tata and us, uh, from a network connectivity perspective, are deploying infrastructure very rapidly. Um, we ourselves are within 54 cities as of today, and we plan to be in 60 cities by the end of this year, uh, targeting 100 cities by next year you can go to our website and uh, enter your PIN code to see if there's coverage or not. So with that uh, core backbone of connectivity, it's starting to spur up uh, adoption uh, in the ag space, uh, in the utility space, uh, from gas to water to electricity. We're really starting to see uh, big players uh, take this uh, seriously and start rolling this out and bidding onto tenders. Uh, and I, I mentioned smart cities over and over again. The reason I do is, you know, the 70% of the market growth in India, it, it relies on low power wide area network technology within the smart city space. And LoRaWAN is a low power wide area network technology. Uh, to reach those 5 billion connections, you need to focus on where the connections are mostly going to be deployed. And that really is in the smart city space. Uh, within the utility space alone, if we talk about a smart water meter, we just made a big announcement that we partnered with McWay in India. And we're deploying 200,000 water meters throughout India. And that's just water meters alone with one company. If you look at the uh, lighting industry, the uh, gas sector, um, the electricity metering, parking, smart bins, you can easily hit these connection points uh, and they all are suitable for LoRaWAN. The great thing about LoRaWAN is that you deploy the infrastructure once and you can use it for many different solutions and projects. Um, when you look into the RF mesh side, uh, typically the infrastructure is going to be deployed and it's proprietary and it's dedicated for that one solution, let's say water retrofitting water meters. But you can't use that same infrastructure wireless communication system for street lights or smart bins. But in LoRaWAN, you can, and that's what our public network is doing and why we're seeing uh, globally it being called the de facto standard uh, across uh, the board. In the industrial space, uh, we also see huge, huge adoptions uh, for LoRaWAN uh, within that space. And it's second uh, to the smart cities, uh, contributing to about 18% of India's IoT market share uh, by 2020. Uh, what we're seeing is that uh, totaling smart cities uh, as well as industrial IoT, that's about 60% of the IoT market in India being um, focused on, and LoRaWAN is, is there being installed and being used commercially today. So uh, aside from the numbers, uh, what we're seeing that it's benefiting is a sustainable India and a sustainable planet. The technology being deployed by Sinra and other companies out there are really touching key critical issues that India is facing. Uh, everything from wildlife conservation to food security to water conservation. Um, in Delhi uh, this week, we're having really high uh, air pollution levels and there are solutions that are being deployed to reduce global house gas emissions, reducing the carbon footprint and even looking at energy conservation. Um, and these are happening today. So what I want to do next is walk through four specific case studies 
um, that we've worked on um, that should give you a little bit of insight on how LoRaWAN is being used in India today. It will also give you uh, a little insight on uh, ROI and, and the return uh, on investment for each of these case studies. So the first one is smart agriculture. Um, what we'll focus on is actually crop monitoring. Um, so the requirement here was the customer wanted to monitor the farmer's tobacco curing process uh, in order for them to know when the crop is ready for shipment. There's a very um, specific amount or, or a short amount of window when you need to actually take the tobacco and move it to the next process uh, during that curation period. Uh, and there wasn't really good insight for the tobacco industry to understand when that uh, tobacco is at its perfect level of curation. Uh, so the customer expected to collect data from all of their uh, farmers that were providing the tobacco and be able to use the data to improve the quality as well as um, reduce loss. So uh, what happened is we talked with a partner of ours uh, and we wanted to understand what really was happening. So we did a lot of requirement gathering. Uh, we wanted to understand the challenges they were having. And so some of the challenges we note here is that the farmer's curing process, uh, they started at different times. And it was really difficult to know when farmer A versus farmer B was at that uh, exact perfect time to take the tobacco to the next uh, process. Um, and there was another issue where some of these villages don't have that last mile connectivity. And if you've got 84 farmers in a big village, all needing to have uh, smart devices uh, running off of battery. It, it's quite challenging when you look at traditional technologies that have been deployed in the past. Um, the other thing in, the, in, in agriculture, and, and really in India across the board, is the price sensitivity of devices. Uh, so sensors need to be at a low cost and need to be able to run for months at a time during this curation uh, process. So with our partners, uh, we actually were able to deploy one gateway um, at a uh, location, a village, where there was about 84 farmers. Uh, they all had their own barn where they were doing their curation process. And there was humidity and temperature sensors that were installed, running off of battery, all communicating over our LoRaWAN network, um, providing real-time insight on that, the, the variables that those sensors were collecting passing it into the analytics platform, where then that was being provided to the end customer, the person purchasing the tobacco, so that they know when to uh, pro uh, purchase it from the farmers uh, at the right time. And what happened is they were actually seeing a reduction in crop loss by 8%. So they had a huge savings by deploying this smart solution. Uh, and it's a repeatable process. The, the, our partner is able to take the same sensors and same devices and deploy this over and over and over again uh, with other customers or with other farmlands um, using very minimal infrastructure. So we felt that this was a huge success and we're starting to see more and more uh, solutions being deployed in the agricultural space uh, with LoRaWAN. Another thing, as I mentioned earlier, smart water uh, management is a really big thing uh, of topic in India and uh, a lot, a lot of companies are looking to deploy solutions to tackle this problem. Um, the requirement that we had is the city authorities wanted to automate their water metering services uh, to their end customers, uh, which would also include monitoring water flow, uh, understanding if there's leakage, uh, being able to see the consumption of water and also provide that to their citizens in real time. Some of the challenges that they were seeing is that currently the, there's no real-time meter reading availability. Uh, most of them are mechanical um, uh, that are not AMI ready. Um, the operational costs uh, to go do the readings were higher than they needed. Um, their billing system was not automated and streamlined. Uh, and it became a, a huge nightmare on the back end, trying to understand when people are making payments, uh, how much to charge them, and so forth. Um, and then the biggest thing that they weren't really uh, knowing was how much revenue are they losing based on water, uh, water theft, water leakage, and so forth. So we did a project uh, in Warda, central uh, India, 
where we uh, deployed uh, our LoRaWAN network um, for a smart city project, uh, and a lot of meters got deployed with uh, ultrasonic water meters uh, using the LoRaWAN uh, communication. And it was communicating, I believe, uh, once a day readings uh, from these different homes. Uh, some of them actually had really deep penetration uh, where cellular technology could not uh, get to uh, in the uh, very narrow uh, alleyways and some were even underground or indoors. Um, and so what basically we did was teaming up with a partner, uh, bringing the full end-to-end -end solution where the meter communicated to our network, we deployed infrastructure throughout the city, that then relayed the data uh, encrypted into the cloud to an analytics platform where it got processed and made available for um, the city officials to uh, assess uh, the water consumption. And then there was an app provided for those citizens uh, that lived there to be able to see their water bill uh, and their water consumption in real time. This is some uh, images of the actual meters that got installed. And you can see uh, in some of these places, it's not ideal for RF, especially if it's really loaded to the ground or enclosed underground. Um, so what we saw though, is that with LoRaWAN, the penetration was there. All of these devices were running off of battery, uh, excellent coverage. If we did find uh, a dead spot, because the infrastructure is such a low cost uh, thing, we were able to quickly deploy new infrastructure to support um, those dead areas. Uh, that is uh, an advantage that LoRaWAN has in smart city projects versus the traditional cellular technology because honestly you can't go and ask a telco provider to deploy a new tower just for internet of things and sensors and devices that maybe three percent of the whole city doesn't have coverage on and LoRaWAN because it's a fractional of the cost to deploy infra you can do that quite easily with a company like Cinema. What we did notice is after this project ran, we were uh, we had a meeting with the mayor of the city. We sat down and we showed them the analytic data, uh, and we were able to determine two locations that had really really high water consumption. Uh, one was his own property, um, and he made a joke actually about oh there must be a leak somewhere. Uh, the other one, which was a more important uh, consumption issue, was uh, a random person was stealing water from the city and distributing it. And they were able to identify that and prevent that from happening going forward based on this smart water meter solution. Um, they reduced their non-revenue water by 10%, which was a huge savings for the city. Um, smart parking is another topic uh, that I'd like to give a case study on. We did this with Amritsar um, in their smart city with the police department. Um, this was not a traditional parking project that you see around the world where the sensors are deployed uh, in the actual parking spaces and a proper management scenario. This was actually um, done in a way to reduce traffic congestion to inform police officers of illegal parked cars on main freeways. Um, so what we did, uh, the requirement was the smart city authorities wanted to reduce their traffic congestion. That was a huge problem. It was a bottleneck at the intersection um, where cars would literally just pull off on the main road um, and leave it. And basically a two lane road would turn into a one lane. Uh, they would go do their shopping. They would hop back into the car when they were done 15 minutes later and pull off. But when that occurs, uh, traffic would start to back up. Uh, delays would happen and cause a big, big mess uh, for the, the authorities as well as the citizens. Um, and they wanted to get real-time automatic notifications when people were doing that uh, and parking in these no parking zones. So the challenges they were having is that the police are, are not able to physically monitor all of the illegal parking spots. This image that you see here in the circle is actually uh, one of the intersections where we deployed the sensors. Um, we had three parking sensors here, and then we had uh, three parking sensors here. And this building is actually a shopping center with a lot of shops. So the two lanes come down, uh, it would turn into a one lane because people would literally just park their car on the street and then it would start to back up. So one, um, the resources uh, were minimal. They didn't have enough police officers to be there all the time. 
Um, there was not a clear way on how to track the tickets that are being issued um, and that the existing illegal parking solutions that they tried in the past really were not working or they were too costly. So with LoRaWAN, we were able to take sensors, we were able to install it in these locations that they wanted people to stop pulling and parking their cars. That sensor would send it to our network where we deployed infrastructure, and then that would process the data into an analytics platform where we had an app called UPark uh, Management uh, Enforcement for the police. So they would have an Android phone, they had the app on their phone. As soon as the sensor got tripped, they would get an automatic alert they could use Google Maps to find their way to that vehicle, and then from there they would issue their shalons. Um, so this is again the example of a parking sensor using LoRaWAN. Uh, it needed to last a long time on battery. Uh, the sensor was installed in the ground, so RF really is a challenge, especially when you have vehicles all over the place and metallic uh, stuff. So LoRaWAN was a really good deep penetration, uh, and then it ended up in the app. This was a news article that came out uh, regarding the parking sensor project, but what I want to highlight is that it was a success because it created 30% um, return of investment. So basically in three to four months, the police department was able to pay for all of the hardware and cost to deploy the solution, and the rest was profit for the city uh, to help enable uh, more police officers uh, and fund some of the other initiatives and projects that they're trying to do. Uh, finally, the last case study that I wanted to go through was in the industrial space. Uh, we did a project on connected operations. Um, it's not the typical vehicle tracking that you might think where it has a GPS tracker. Um, what they had was uh, the customer wanted to monitor the movements of the trucks. It would come into a very large space uh, and it would visit many warehouses while it was on the campus. Uh, what they wanted to know was understand the route of the vehicle and when the expected arrival was of that vehicle to each of these warehouses, the throughput inward and outward uh, as it was going through their, uh, their process. And, and basically what they're trying to do is improve their logistic operations, having packages ready to load up onto the truck quicker uh, so that the truck will not be sitting on the property uh, for extended amount of times. Uh, this manufacturing company actually has to pay extra for the vehicle's time while on their campus. So if it takes three days or five days to load everything up, they're paying a specific rate every day for that driver. And so by reducing that time frame, they make a huge savings. The challenges they had, they, they were using RFID uh, initially, where that had a little uh, tag that the driver would pick up upon entry, they had readers deployed at different warehouses, and it was supposed to uh, send as the car drove in um, to the RFID entry. The problem was is the RFID is actually running off of land, and this, uh, some of their campuses were over eight hectares, and land was not available in every site, every warehouse. So they needed another way to send the RFID data to the cloud, um, and we worked with them to provide them a integrated solution where we used an RS-232 converter that plugged directly into the RFID reader and sent the RFID data over LoRaWAN through our LoRaWAN infrastructure and then provide them the data that they wanted in real time. What they were able to do after implementing this in within months, they actually cut their transportation costs by 50%. And what I mean by that is the driver, for example, if he was used to spend three days on their campus doing the loading, was now doing it in 1.5 days by operational uh, efficiency improvements and logistic readiness. So we felt that this was a huge success and now this is being replicated in many other type of industrial spaces. Retrofitting uh, manufacturing equipment um, in textile industry or anything you name it in the automotive industry is things that are starting to be done and people are starting to really look at it because the equipment is expensive, they've already invested money into other things. Um, and when it just comes to challenges of long distance communication, uh, there's ways to do that with existing equipment and we found that as a very huge success for us. So uh, to summarize all of the case studies, LoRaWAN is demonstrating real savings 
Um, in 2017, we saw a lot of pilots and POCs. In 2018, the same thing was happening. But in 2019, it's really starting to convert into actual commercials. These pilots, these uh, POCs are starting to come to an end. The technology is being adopted and people really now are using it in a commercial sense and seeing actual savings. Um, you cannot see this type of output with NB-IoT or any of the other technologies that you're hearing out that are coming up because they don't exist. Uh, LoRaWAN is here today. It is taking over the market and it has a really, really good chance of staying for a very, very long term. Um, and so a couple of resource things that I'd like to point you all to. Um, I collaborated with a couple of uh, colleagues, Sunil David from AT&T, Monica Gupta from Capgemini, and we wrote a white paper on behalf of the IT India IoT Congress. Um, this is a link that you'll be able to go to and download the white paper. This white paper has many, many case studies of several different types of technologies, not just LoRaWAN, across many, many verticals. Um, but you will see in this uh, paper several, several case studies that were done with LoRaWAN, and it'll go into a little bit more detail uh, on how it was done, uh, the company contact information if you want to reach out to them. Uh, from the Laura Alliance perspective, I urge you to go to the resource hub, which is on their website. You can download white papers, case studies, presentations, technical documentations. Uh, you can also get membership information there. Uh, please, please, please. Uh, reach out to us. We, we really, really want to keep growing this ecosystem in India and we believe as the more parties, the more companies join hands, uh, the more successful the technology will be at the end of the day. Um, so with that, I want to say thank you everyone and uh, I will pass it back to Tina uh, for questioning. Thank you so much for that insightful session. We will now be taking up questions. So our first question is, um, how do you see or where do you see Laura Wan five to 10 years from now, considering the ever-changing landscape of technology once in every few years? How easy or difficult or possible or impossible will it be to migrate from one system to another if at all such a need arises in the future? This is one question. Right, so the great thing um, about LoRaWAN is these devices are meant to last 10, 15 years. I, I actually know some uh, device manufacturers in the utility space that are building and claiming that the devices will last for 16 years. Um, in the smart city space, these tenders are actually five, 10 years. Um, so the technology that's being selected today will remain and continue to be used through the life of those tenders. Um, and LoRaWAN is really the only viable solution for about 70% of the smart city market. Um, when it comes to data migration or, or integration of uh, legacy systems, um, I would look at it more at the data perspective and not so much of the sensor communication level. Um, uh, we're talking to CDOT, uh, the DOT, uh, we talk to the uh, BIS, uh, where we're looking at a standardized uh, platform for the application layer. Uh, 1M2M is coming up. Um, so once the data is sent to where it needs to be sent, that's really not a LoRaWAN or a 5G or an MBIOT thing anymore. It's more on the analytics side of the game, the application side. Um, sensors, uh, once they run out of battery, in most cases, uh, it's the end of their life and then you replace them as you traditionally do right now in any uh, product that you purchase. Um, but there are uh, companies that are coming out with uh, replaceable battery options. The costs are a little bit higher, but in those cases, uh, when the battery uh, is uh, expired, you just put a new battery and it could last even longer. Um, so I see LoRaWAN uh, being around for a very, very long time, uh, and five to ten years, we're here. Um, we're already employing, uh, deploying this technology for ten-year tenders. So uh, I'm, I'd be more interested to see how it goes in 20 years. Thank you for that answer. Uh, the next question is, can there be efficient ways to manage indoors and outdoor scenarios with LoRaWAN technology? 
Uh, well, that, that's a loaded question. Um, it really depends on a lot of variables. What your requirements are is where I typically start. Uh, what kind of projects are you trying to do indoor versus outdoor? Um, what kind of material does the RF have to propagate through? Can the infrastructure being deployed externally be uh, received uh, in, inside indoors as well? Um, uh, the, the great thing about uh, the LoRaWAN technology is anyone can be, uh, deploy their own private networks if they have small projects. I would uh, urge everyone to strongly consider uh, public operators, commercial grade uh, networks when you're looking at large scale deployments. Um, but companies today are doing smaller deployments with their own point to point uh, um, private networks. Um, so you can take indoor gateways that are very affordable and deploy them inside, which can basically take care of the indoor scenario depending on how many floors you have. Um, our outdoor units uh, can get up to 10 kilometers, even further, depending on the height uh, from uh, sea level, uh, the type of antenna you're using, and uh, all the other variables that impact RF propagation. Um, I, I hope I answered that question clearly. Sure. Thank you. The next question is, how LoRaWAN is going to be relevant in India when telcos are focusing on NB-IoT? Uh, I, I think I mentioned it during our presentation. Um, while there was a recent news that came out that uh, you know some of the telco operators are really starting to strongly push the NB-IoT uh, trials. Uh, again, they're trials, right? Um, they're not here yet. They're, none of the towers are ready to support commercial deployments. Um, LoRaWAN is. You've got two operators right now that have both deployed commercial grade networks that have real commercial projects running. Um, and these tenders that are coming out in the smart city space uh, are floated now, and they need the project to start within the next six months. Um, if you get the tender now on one technology, it's basically a lock-in for 10 years. Um, so from that optic, uh, the technologies that are here today are going to be there for uh, quite a long time. Uh, when it comes to comparing it uh, or being a competitive advantage or, or that kind of thing, when both technologies are available in the market, I think they both have their place in the market. Uh, NB-IoT has, has some valid uh, uh, things that it addresses that LoRaWAN cannot, um, such as higher data throughput, for example. Um, but LoRaWAN also does really great on battery and the affordability and, and deployment. Um, so I think both of them are complementary to each other, uh, and um, some telco operators around the world are actually deploying both um, because they see the need for both. Sure. The next question is, how can LoRaWAN benefit ISPs to provide connectivity to businesses? What is the infrastructure or service model involved? Uh, that's more of a business discussion. We should probably take it offline. Um, but we, we actually deal with ISPs all the time uh, from our infrastructure perspective. We have tie-ups with uh, large tower companies, ISPs, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, and part of our infrastructure relies on the internet as a backhaul perspective to allow the data to communicate. So that part of it is a huge win for the ISPs. Um, there are discussions going on with um, alternative offerings, uh, for their customers, uh, where they provide Wi-Fi or internet services, where they could also potentially provide LoRaWAN services, uh, but it really depends on a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. The next question is, how does LoRaWAN fit into network slicing? Uh, network slicing, so I'm not the CTO of the company, so I'm not gonna give you guys an answer that I don't really know 100% to. Um, but you can go to uh, the Lower Alliance website, uh, you can look at the standards and specifications. And if you email me that question uh, directly, I believe uh, you can get that from Tina, or it may be uh, on the actual GoToMeeting. We can get you a more uh, accurate answer to that question. Thank you. The next question is, what growth for the LoRaWAN technology do you see in the coming five years? 
I see it continually growing. Uh, it's going to be in the millions of connectivity devices very soon within the next three years. Uh, with the two public operators in India alone, uh, we're probably going to cross a million connection devices in 2020. Um, again, with the smart city efforts going on, the tenders are choosing LoRaWAN as the technology in some of these cases. Uh, so therefore, we're already in five to next 10 years of a, a, a future. Um, I just uh, am really excited about the growth of the uh, Lore Alliance's membership. Uh, companies really uh, adopting this. Um, Bosch uh, and, and, and us uh, came out with an announcement recently where a company like that is heavily investing in R&D to develop solutions. Um, the device ecosystem, I would like to see it grow faster, uh, and we're here to help. If you all need to do any kind of testing, reach out to us. Uh, we can give you some tips uh, and collaborate. Um, but it's the future is there for, for a long, long haul. Thank you. The next question is, what are the current challenges in the device ecosystem and also the pricing related challenges and how can one address such challenges? Uh, well, one pricing related issue that I see is uh, currently the customs charges, the cost of getting a device externally into India is increasing the cost roughly 30 to 40 percent. Um, that is a huge blow to the price sensitivity that India has. So we really need local manufacturers to step up and bring solutions um, to keep the price down. Now when it comes to quality, uh, we are hoping that it will improve. Um, I think there's a learning curve here. A lot of companies are uh, starting to deploy or, or build uh, LoRaWAN solutions. Some have really good quality, some not so much. Um, so from my optic, I think the device, device ecosystem still needs uh, some way to grow uh, locally, um, but we're on the right path and we're starting to see uh, startups uh, as well as large scale manufacturers that are producing you know, thousands and thousands of units a week, uh, creating LoRaWAN solutions and they're working perfectly fine here at Made in India. Thank you. The next question is, will LoRaWAN work for real-time applications like gas detection systems where alerts need to be real-time? Um, there's a lot of variables you need to consider. Uh, power source, is it a Class C device? If it's a Class C device, is there direct power? Um, when you switch a device in LoRaWAN to Class C, it's power hungry. So you would need an alternative power source, not just a battery operated device. Um, then um, the dedication of channels on the network side, um, the availability of the network, how um, free the gateways that are deployed for that project, are they being allocated for other projects as well? Those are things that we look at as part of our network planning. Uh, we are now working with companies in the electricity metering space, which is really power hungry and needing real time uh, communication uh, for uh, really serious critical systems um, and uh, a lot of those uh, variations and variables are being considered as part of the planning. So project by project you have to look at everything and see exactly what does real time mean. Uh, sometimes people ask for real time but don't really need it. Uh, sometimes you actually need it and uh, how you deploy your infrastructure, the equipment, the technology, uh, providing the right power uh, and availability is critical to the success of those projects. Thank you. The next question is, while there are good use cases and strong case studies, do you see any specific challenges with adoption in India? Um, again, for me, it's price, price sensitivity. Uh, the more the adoption comes, the more the ecosystem grows, the more device readiness made in India will be here and will hit those price points. Um, the chip guys and the module makers are in a competitive battle right now where prices, uh, you know, one rupee is causing a, a deal to be lost. Um, and so the competitiveness in the market is going to create uh, price reductions uh, inherently. So if we can get the prices down properly, 
Um, then the next challenge is educating and making sure people understand when Loroan is actually the right um, choice. Uh, sometimes Loroan is not necessary. If you can do something with Wi-Fi or do something with Bluetooth or RFID, you should probably do it with those technologies. Um, but when you have requirements that align perfectly with LoRaWAN, um, that's when uh, it'll be a success. Um, but my, my thing that I see right now that uh, could um, change the adoption rate uh, to exponentially grow is uh, all related to pricing. Thank you. The next question is, how good is LoRa for large healthcare facilities in managing hospital infrastructure? The LoRaWAN uh, technology is being deployed in hospitals around the world. Uh, we've partnered with a company called My Devices. They have a solution called IoT in a Box. We actually are providing that for the Indian market as well. Um, they have deployed this in several, several hospitals throughout the United States uh, and Canada, North America, basically. Um, it is uh, doing well. Uh, it really depends on what exactly you're trying to do within these hospitals. Um, uh, temperature uh, monitoring is a really get, a great use case, especially for uh, medicines and um, samples that are being taken from humans that need to be maintained in a proper temperature or can get spoiled. Uh, those type of things, you can use uh, ready uh, devices now in the lower WAN space with the network. Um, also, you know, how big the campus is, how much data needs to be, uh, where does the data need to go, um, how far does the sensor need to communicate. Those are things that uh, on a requirement by requirement basis um, you need to assess. But overall, LoRaWAN is a really good solution for certain requirements in the hospital industry. Thank you. The next question is, what is the likelihood of LoRaWAN and NB-IoT coexisting technically as well as commercially in the near, in the near future? Um, I think I've already answered that question previously, uh, but to reiterate, they both have their space in the market. Um, the biggest thing is where there's not coverage today on cell cellular networks. You have to really strongly look at will that infrastructure and coverage be deployed for the Internet of Things and devices and sensors. Uh, the core business model of telcos is to provide connectivity for their mobile subscribers, which where I think 5G is probably going to be more of an interest to a telco uh, than the NB-IoT space. Um, the market opportunity for them differs from the alternative technologies like we deploy. So our core business is focused on IoT and devices and sensors. So where there's coverage lacking, alternative solutions like LoRaWAN is perfect. Um, some operators around the world are actually doing complementary deployments of LoRaWAN and NB-IoT within the same cities to provide their customers 100% coverage because at the end of the day, the customer only cares about the data and the analytics. They don't care how the data gets there. So if you are a telco operator and you need to provide high SLAs and data communication to your end customer, you may strongly consider alternative wireless communication systems to provide that connectivity instead of uh, deploying brand new towers and infrastructure, which is extremely costly from a cellular perspective. Thank you. We will now be taking our last question. And the question is, how is the LoRaWAN ecosystem addressing security as well as I'll repeat the question. Yeah, but it, how, I'm sorry. How is the LoRaWAN ecosystem addressing security as well as interoperability in the wake of a magnitude of devices in IoT environment? 
Uh, well, the LoRaWAN itself is uh, already encrypted, 128 AES encryption from the time the data transmits to the time the data is decrypted on the analytics platform. Um, so the data communication piece is already secure. Um, there are companies out there that are doing uh, chip down uh, security uh, elements, secure elements that are being deployed. Uh, and so that is making the device itself secure. Um, there's also discussions, like I mentioned earlier, on 1M to M and how to implement additional secure levels uh, so that the whole overall end-to-end -end piece uh, is uh, secure from the time the device is manufactured, installed, until the time it's received and processed. Um, so they are being deployed uh, currently around the world. Um, I don't see any uh, major issues uh, from a security perspective. Um, companies like Avnet, um, Trusted Objects, uh, GND, um, and, and uh, several others out there have solutions ready today. Thank you for answering that. Unfortunately, we won't be able to take all the questions due to time constraints. If you have any other questions, please send them at editor at the rate ettelecom.com. Thank you, Mr. Ali Hosseini, for sharing valuable insights on the topic, how LoRaWAN could drive India's IoT ecosystem. It was an engaging and insightful talk and hope all the participants have enjoyed the session. The recording of this webinar will be made available on ettelecom.com. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and stay tuned for more webinars on IoT. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.